This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. So now let us uh, consider uh, one of very simple problem. A cyclist speeding at 18 km per hour on a level road takes a sharp circular turn of radius 3 cm without reducing the speed. The coefficient of static friction between the tires and the road is 0 0.1. Will the cyclist slip while taking the turn? So that is the question. So this is an unbanked road, isn't it? Because they have given in the question clearly that on a level road. Frictional force alone can provide the necessary centripetal force needed to keep the cyclist moving on a circular turn without slipping. So, if the speed is too large or if the turn is too sharp, force is not sufficient to provide the necessary centripetal force and the cyclist slips in, the, in those two cases. So, the condition for the cyclist not to slip is given. We already studied this condition. That is V square must be less than or equal to mu s into Rg. Okay. So, here they have given the coefficient of static friction as 0 0.1 and the radius they have given it as 3 meter and uh, we know the value of G. It is 9.8 meter per second square. So, we can calculate mu s r g that is 0 0.13 and 9.8, isn't it? So, if you add, if you, you know, multiply these three, we get 2.94 meter square per second square. So, the given velocity is 18 km per hour. If you convert it into, in terms of second. Since one quantity is in meter square per second, isn't it? Again, we should convert this quantity in the same unit. So, 18 to multiplied with 1000 by 3000. 600. 18 ones are 18 twos are 2 ones are and 2 fives are we get 5 meter per second the velocity. So that is if you consider v square this is v if you consider v square we get 25 meter square second raised to minus 2. So the condition is not obeyed. Here V square is not less than mu s rg if you compare these two. So, the cyclist will slip while taking the circular turn. Isn't it? Yes. So, now let us consider one more simple problem. A circular race track of radius 300 meter is banked at an angle of 15 degree. If the coefficient of friction between the wheels of a race car and the road is 0.2, what is the optimum speed of the race car to avoid wear and tear on its tires and maximum permissible speed to avoid slipping? See, on a banked road, the horizontal component of the normal force and the frictional force both contribute to provide centripetal force to keep the car moving on a circular turn without slipping. So, at the optimum speed, the normal reactions component is enough to provide the needed centripetal force. If it is the speed is optimum, normal reaction is enough to provide the necessary centripetal force and the frictional force is not required in that case. So, the optimum speed V0 is given by R 
RG tan theta whole raised to 1 by 2. So here we know the value of R. It is 300 meter. Isn't it? And they have given the value of theta as 15 degree. And we know G that is 9.8 meter per second. So by substituting all these values in this particular equation, we get V0 value that is 28.1 meter per second. Meter per second. So the maximum permissible speed Vmax is uh, given by, we know the formula for that also, isn't it? Vmax is given by what? Yes, Vmax is uh, given by Rg mu s plus tan theta divided by 1 minus mu s tan theta. So here they have given the value of coefficient, they have given the value of r, we know the value of g. If you substitute all those values, we get the maximum permissible value as 38.1 meter per second. Isn't it? Yes. Now coming to the last part of this chapter that is solving problems in mechanics. How to solve problems in mechanics. See, the three laws of motion that we just learnt are the foundation of mechanics. So, now we should able to handle a large variety of problems in mechanics. So, a typical problem in mechanics usually does not merely involve a single body under the action of given forces. So, more often we will need to consider an assembly of different bodies exerting forces on each other. So, usually we not, no, will not deal with a single body. We usually deal with a number of bodies with a number of forces exerting on each other. So, besides, each body is the assembly experiences the force of gravity. So, when trying to solve a problem of this type, it is useful to remember the fact that we can choose any part of the assembly and apply the laws of motion to that part provided we include all forces on the chosen part due to the remaining parts of the assembly. So, we may call the chosen part of the assembly as the system and the remaining part of the assembly as the environment. So, we have allowed the same method in solved examples. Till now what we have solved, we have, you know, we followed the same method. So, in order to solve the problems in mechanics, we should follow some of these steps. What are those steps? Let's see. So, the first step in solving any problems related to mechanics is draw a diagram showing schematically the various parts of the assembly of bodies, the links and supports. Okay, we should draw the diagram schematically so which uh, so shows the various parts which are involved in that particular problem okay and even the links how they are related the direction all those things we have to draw schematically that is the first step 
and the second step is choose a convenient part of the assembly as one system so after drawing the schematic you know diagram we should choose one particular part to apply the loss of motion so that part we consider it as a system and the remaining part we call it as an environment so the second step is to choose that particular part where we need, you know what we to which we want to apply the loss of motion okay that is the second part in the third part draw a separate diagram which shows this system and all the forces on this system by the remaining part of the assembly include also the forces on the system by other agencies do not include the forces on the environment by the system a diagram of this type is known as free body diagram so we already use this free body diagram in the previous problems that we solved isn't it so in the in this particular diagram what we do we'll separate that system that what we want to consider first so from the remaining environment and we also write all the forces which are acting on that system isn't it but we should not write the forces which is uh, exerting on the environment by that system under consideration okay so even we uh, include the forces which are acting on that particular system by other external agencies okay this kind of diagram we call it as a free body diagram okay with all the forces which are acting on that particular system but not the forces which are acting on the environment by this system what we have considered that we should not do so this is the third step that is writing free body diagram in the fourth step in a free body diagram include information about forces their magnitudes and directions that are either given or you have you are sure example the direction of tension in the string along its length the rest should be treated as unknowns to be determined using the laws of motion so here in whenever you write free body diagram you just write down the information about various forces okay so information about various forces like their magnitudes and direction and one of the simple example is this, uh, whenever you take a string obviously you know the tension acts along the length of a uh, string isn't it so you can directly write that direction so not only the magnitudes and directions that you know and even we can write the you know the directions which you are sure for example this uh, tension as i told you just now so the rest should be treated as unknowns to be determined using the laws of motion so whatever the things that we know that we should mention whatever the things that we don't know we are going to find out using the laws of motion isn't it so all those things we should clearly mention in the particular diagram that free body diagram should give the complete information about the system and the various external forces their magnitudes the directions everything should be there on that diagram okay and the final step that we should consider while writing or while solving problems in mechanics is here if necessary follow the same procedure for another choice of system in doing so employ newton's third law that is if in the free body diagram of a the force on a due to b is shown as f then in the free body diagram of b the force on b due to a should be shown as minus f so this is okay one system we have considered till now that's finished now we are going to consider another system from the environment 
so in that case you just try to apply newton's third law and you just try to follow the same procedures what you followed for the first system for example if the force on a due to b is taken as f in the first free body diagram then in the second free body diagram we should write the force on b due to a as minus f because those two forces are equal and opposite isn't it so these are the few steps that we should consider